computer science, uh, the uh, mathematicians, but you probably many faces you don't recognize because they are from other disciplines. And this is really uh, 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 important. For us to tackle these projects, we really have to have highly interdisciplinary uh, 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 projects and teams. So, I would like to start by uh, mentioning the notion of sustainability. Uh, in uh, 1987, the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development <coughs> produced the seminal report called the Common our common future or the Brandlet report. This report raised for the first time serious concerns about the state of the planet. It was also very revolutionary introducing the notion of sustainability and sustainable development. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So this is important because really it uh, uh, put uh, uh, the setting we need to really plan today, thinking in terms of the future. Uh, 20 years later, the IPCC report reiterated what was stated in the common future and in fact stated that things got worse. Basically, they stated there are no major issues raised in our common future for which the foreseeable trends are favorable. For example, they mentioned global warming, erosion of biodiversity. <coughs> and recently, there was also a very interesting study in nature. They looked at 10 crucial biophysical systems and basically they wanted to, to, to see whether or not we had crossed the tipping point. In particular, they looked at climate, they looked at biodiversity loss, uh, uh, ocean acidification, nitrogen cycle, uh, etc. So a few systems, and as you can see, you can see my pointer. Is there a, a pointer? Because I don't think this works, but that's fine. <laughs> so, so basically, Biodiversity loss, it, the situation is quite dramatic. We really have crossed the tipping point a long time ago. Nitrogen cycle is also quite dramatic. But, you know, we are really uh, uh, about uh, to reach the, cr the tipping point for all these systems. So, interestingly, the, the common future stress that well, sustainability is not only about the environment. It's important for us to look at the environment, but we need to understand that all these issues are interlinked and interconnected. So in order for us to secure our future, we really need to guarantee the health of three systems, the environment, the society, and the economy. And therefore, sustainable development encompasses balancing environmental, economic, and societal needs. Well, from a, a computational point of view, you know, challenge, uh, sustainability problems are really challenging complex dynamical systems. They are unique in scale, impact, complexity, and richness, and this is because they offer often involve multiple and highly interconnected components and players in highly dynamic and uncertain environments. So, studying and understanding these uh, systems is uh, a, a, a big challenge, but at the same time, we will have tremendous opportunities to advance the state of the art of uh, computing information science by uh, studying these problems. So, our vision is that, indeed, computation, uh, computer science can and should play a key role in increasing the efficient and the eff effectiveness of the way we manage and allocate our natural resources while enriching and transforming computing and information science and related disciplines. So we really need critical mass in this new field of computational sustainability and I believe we all share this uh, 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 notion or this vision. So what I want to do today, I want to give you a, 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 
a few examples of uh, computational sustainability problems, highlighting research teams. Then I will say a few words about our uh, uh, particular research teams, the ICS uh, research teams, and then I'll say a few words about uh, building a community in computational sustainability. So I will try to touch these uh, three areas. But a lot has been said in terms of energy, and I only have 30 minutes, so I will actually focus more on the first uh, uh, topic. So concerning uh, biodiversity, and uh, uh, as I mentioned before, biodiversity loss is really a, a reality. And uh, by, uh, uh, a key cause of biodiversity loss is habitat loss and uh, fragmentation. So biologists are interested in understanding the landscape connectivity because uh, it's important to maintain, uh, 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 to allow movement and connectivity across uh, different uh, landscapes and uh, uh, so that that will reduce the, help reduce inbreeding, also increase genetic diversity and allow, uh, allow for species perhaps even colonize new habitats. So there has been considerable work uh, in this area. Biologists have studied this problem. In fact, they even borrow ideas from uh, uh, circuit theory, theory. But now a key question is, well, given that we have limited resources and given the constant threats of uh, habitat loss, how do we choose which habitats to protect so that landscapes will stay well connected for wild animal species? So basically, these are problems we are familiar with that computer science, computer science can really uh, 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 provide uh, uh, good insights and hop, uh, hopefully good solutions. So there are really tremendous opportunities uh, uh, in terms of new computational models integrating ecological and uh, uh, economic constraints. And in fact, I will come back to this issue. By studying these problems, we actually uh, will uh, uh, develop new models that very likely will be uh, 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 applicable to other uh, uh, areas. So here is uh, a, a more concrete example. We have uh, three reserves, and basically, the, uh, namely Yellowstone Glacial Park and the Salmon Salway uh, ecosystem. So we have three reserves, and. The idea is to build a wildlife corridor that is going to connect these uh, reserves, uh, again, uh, uh, as a way of uh, allowing for diversity and uh, uh, reducing inbreeding. The problem is that, in general, we have very low budgets to implement these uh, corridors. We, let's for now assume that we know the you know, costs, etc., and we also know the suitability of uh, uh, the different uh, uh, areas uh, with respect to grizzly bears. We want to build a corridor for a grizzly bear. Well, this problem really, uh, uh, if we want to study its uh, uh, connectivity and how to design a corridor, we can really formulate this problem as a graph uh, problem. In fact, we introduced this, uh, the connection subgraph problem where you have uh, a graph. In this graph, you have uh, each parcel is a node, and adjacent parcels uh, uh, are connected by an edge. You have, in this case, three green nodes on the left that uh, represent the, 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 the terminals that we want to connect. So what we want to do is we want to find a, a, a subgraph, a connected component, such that that subgraph contains the initial, the, the, the key terminals that we want to connect. It's fully connected so the animals can go, uh, you know, from one reserve to another one, but it has to satisfy a cost. I cannot spend more money than what I have. So this problem is, uh, NP hard, but interestingly, 
<coughs> what we, we discover is that real world instances are full of structure that we can actually exploit and uh, solve very, uh, uh, solve uh, large scale problems. So this is just a, a worst case, or it is a worst case re result, but in practice, we, we can actually exploit the structure of these problems. And in fact, just for example, if we ignore the, the utilities, uh, 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 here, uh, uh, what we want to find this component, uh, discard them uh, uh, such that we, we don't go over a, a budget, but we want to maximize the utility for, for the, the, the grizzly bears. But if we ignore the utilities, let's say I just want to find the mean cost corridor, so without uh, 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 thinking of maximizing utility, just see what's the mean cost for me to produce such a corridor. That problem is actually known. It's the mean uh, 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 cost Steiner T problem. And if, if we have a small set, if this problem is NP hard, but if we actually have a small set of reserves, this problem is fixed parameter tractable, so we can actually solve in polynomial time. And you see here that we have the mean cost solution for different uh, 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 granularities of the grid and for the granularity that is required for grizzly bears, we can actually find the optimal and prove that it's optimal solution. So when you li read the literature, in fact, typically they don't formulate the problem, they just, you know, uh, in, in the conservation, uh, uh, state the problem is hard uh, and use heuristics. Well, we can actually find the optimal solutions. Now, if we want to maximize the utility, now really the problem becomes considerably hard. And we actually, uh, I want to emphasize that, for example, uh, and I'm not going to go, in fact, the font is too small so that we don't even try to go over these encodings, but uh, I want to emphasize that uh, you know, different encodings make a huge difference, uh, can, can really have a, 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 a huge impact. For example, th this one is a, a, a straightforward encoding. It has a, 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 a very compact size, it's poly size, but this one, on the other hand, has an exponential number uh, of constraints, so you would not think of using it, yet it's a much tighter uh, 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 representation that captures well the, the, the connectness uh, structure, so basically that actually this uh, encoding leads to much better bounds uh, uh, for this problem. And we actually study this problem, this, touches a little bit this uh, issue of uh, uh, experimental uh, and uh, research where we want to understand the behavior of uh, our algorithms beyond the notion of uh, 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 the worst case notion. So here we are trying to understand the behavior of the algorithms from a typical case point of view because that will allow us to design better algorithms. So what we show here, we generated synthetic instances. In this case, we have grids, 10 by 10 grids, and we place uh, terminals uh, uh, randomly. In this case, we are studying the problem when we have three terminals, and along the x-axis, we vary the budget, and here, along the y-axis, we, we, we look at the runtime. And here, what we have, Unfortunately, my, this, oh. what we have here, we have two curves. One, this is the behavior of, of the optimal algorithm, the algorithm that proves optimality. And this is the behavior of uh, 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 an algorithm that starts with, uh, as a first solution, the mean cost solution that is optimal, and then tries to extend that solution as much as possible uh, and in fact finds the optimal extension for uh, that solution based on uh, a given budget. Of course, this is not globally optimal, but what, what is interesting is this solution, you see the typical case is much faster than this, 
the green one, that is the one that is provably optimal. This is a log scale. And in fact, here we compare the gap in terms of the optimal solution and the, the other solution that optimally extends the mean corridor solution. And it's interesting to see that the gap is relatively small. The optimal, the utility gap is around 7%. And this is for synthetic instances and our experience is that in general, uh, uh, real world problems are actually easy, easier than synthetic instances. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we were able to, uh, uh, you know, solve this problem to optimality or uh, uh, within 1% of optimality for uh, 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 the sizes that uh, about uh, 13,000 nodes and uh, considering uh, uh, interesting budgets. Well, this is an example. Obviously, we want to look at multiple species and what I want to emphasize is when we study these problems, we actually uh, introduce new uh, uh, problems for, uh, from a uh, computer science point of view. For example, to study the multi-species, we introduce the variation of the uh, multigraph, uh, the Steiner uh, tree and the Steiner forest pro uh, problem that we refer to as the Steiner multigraph problem. We also are looking at other uh, connectivity problems such as what we call the upgrading sh shortest path problem. So as I said, very interesting uh, uh, research questions for us. There are other issues, obviously, issues concerning dynamics, game theory, for example, how to understand the, the dynamics of interactions, how to be fair, for example, when you are uh, planning for multiple species, how, how are you going to, to try to be fair, and what metrics should we use? Another uh, uh, interesting aspect is that we can actually also build interesting games for, for, for kids. Here, we, we are actually uh, 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 working on a travel museum on computational sustainability. And basically here actually, this is, uh, 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 we had uh, uh, at, uh, in Ithaca, Boynton Middle School, uh, the mass day, where we, we showed kids and they had the opportunity to play with lots of uh, exciting games around, uh, uh, around uh, this topic. Oh, by the way, one of, I, I forgot to mention that we are actually working with the Rocky Mountain Research Station and looking at different species, in particular wolverines. Do you know what a wolverine is? Well, I have to say that I knew about the wolverine because of X-Men. My son loves <laughs> <laughs> the, the wolverine, and I thought the wolverine was a mean wolf. Well, actually, it is a mean weasel, <laughs> so. <laughs> so, uh, uh, basically, again, we are studying all these problems, and I want to point out that these problems are not unique to applications in sustainability. In fact, my making progress in uh, uh, these problems, we are also studying uh, 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 problems that have applications in areas such as, you know, uh, networks or sensor and wireless networks. Uh, how many minutes do I have? I think I need to speed up here. Uh, we've got about 11 minutes. Oh. Okay. So I do have to speed up. So let me t uh, mention another uh, uh, problem. This problem concerns uh, red cockade woodpeckers. Th this is a very endangered species and we are working with this, the conservation fund, and basically they are managing this uh, uh, preserve, the palmetto tree preserve, and they would like to increase the populations are, uh, of uh, RCWs, red cockade woodpeckers. So there are uh, 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 different uh, managing options, such as acquiring new land, uh, uh, building artificial cavities for the birds. The birds build cavities, and, but it takes them about six years, and they live for about uh, the, uh, six years. So building artificial uh, cavities actually uh, uh, makes a big difference. We can also translocate the birds. So in order to study this problem, now we need to 
actually consider, because this is a highly endangered species, we actually need to model the, uh, how the, the bird moves around, the ecology of the bird, and also the biology of the bird. And therefore, we need to uh, uh, have uh, uh, interactions between when we are uh, making decisions, we have to consider the managed decision, the decisions, but taking into consideration, you know, the biology and ecology of the bird. So if we are interested in, in uh, maximizing the diffusion of the birds, we can see this problem as the maximizing, ma maximizing the spread of cascades, but again, this is, has to be coupled with uh, an optimization problem. So this is a very uh, challenging uh, problem, as you uh, 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 probably realize. And in fact, it touches one of or two of the, the breakout sessions, where we need to bring together different, uh, different uh, technologies. And it, it's quite challenging. Now that we are planning long term, we really need to have very large uh, uh, study these large scale problems. We, they are highly stochastic and the current techniques really don't scale up. Again, by studying these problems, we can use the technology to study social networks or uh, other problems. And also we can look at the problem from a different perspective when, for example, we want to minimize the spread. Uh, and this is important to study, for example, epidemiology uh, applications, uh, uh, invas invasive species, etc. So there are many other issues and many other levels of complexity. For example, how to estimate species distributions, how to factor in and consider movements and migrations, climate change, etc. Uh, Steve Phillips talked about this, so I going to be very brief, just say this is a very active research area. For example, uh, 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 there's a, uh, the model that uh, uh, Steve uh, talked about is Maxent. Here we have another model that is a model that is an extension of what it's called the occupancy detection model. And I want just to highlight that this model uh, introduces expertise. And this has to do with the fact that a lot of the data that we use uh, uh, for species distributions and in particular for bird conservation is data from citizen science uh, uh, projects. Therefore, you know, observers have different levels of expertise that we have to uh, uh, factor in. This is a, a, a very exciting project. Uh, it's a way of uh, gathering uh, uh, information, but also a, a way of uh, increasing scientific literacy and getting the, the, the public involved. So, so, in fact, we are currently uh, uh, working on producing the State of the Birds, which is uh, a, a document for, uh, requested by the Interior Secretary, I believe, uh, to, 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 to know what the state of the birds is in terms of species, in terms of uh, distributions of birds. So unfortunately, I'm not sure if you can see the animation. So the end goal basically by bringing together data from eBird and data from many other sources, we want to have a, 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 a good idea and study, for example, patterns of migration, uh, understand impacts of climate change, etc. Here, uh, uh, what we see is from January to uh, uh, December, how the, this board, the, the Indian boating moves around the US. Uh, well, if you look at the, 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 the data that we get for, uh, for eBird, you see that the data is basically, there's a huge concentration uh, in the cities. So there's uh, 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 what we would say sampling bias. The, the data is highly concentrated. So one uh, issue is how can we uh, uh, try to compensate for this. For example, this leads to interesting questions, uh, active learning questions uh, concerning where should we send borders or uh, uh, 
and what kind of incentives should we give birders to collect the data in the other areas that for which we don't have that many observations. Uh, Obviously, there are very interesting uh, issues concerning HCI, but I'm going to skip this because I assume that Bill is going to talk about uh, uh, in uh, the next talk. But issues like how to get uh, public uh, uh, engage, the public engage, uh, crowdsourcing, citizen science, and uh, you know models and methods to increase the awareness of sustainability practice behaviors and attitudes. Uh, this is a very exciting project, uh, and uh, uh, I believe perhaps uh, maybe Vipin will say a few words about it later. Uh, it is a, a, a project for monitoring uh, uh, global forest cover, uh, cover. This is a partnership. Uh, 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 Minnesota is uh, the University of Minnesota is uh, partnering with the Planetary Skin Institute, which is a consortium. Uh, 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 NASA uh, Cisco Consortium, and the idea is very exciting, is to develop a global nervous system that will integrate land, sea, air, and space-based sensor for helping the public and private sectors making decisions to prevent and adapt to climate change. Uh, Again, this is a, 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 another area where uh, IT can have a, a huge impact. Sensor uh, 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 is obviously another area where we can have a, a, a huge impact. There are very exciting research questions concerning uh, sensor networks. Here, this is a slide by actually Andrea, uh, Andreas Krauss, and they look at the problem where to place say, a sensor so that you want to get the most useful information and mi at minimum cost. And they, uh, even though this problem is hard, uh, they, they, they show that a lot of the, the functions, the utility functions are submodular and therefore greedy algorithms provide good guarantees. Uh, here, this is uh, another interesting project. Neo Martin is, uh, is the lead uh, PI on this project. And the goal is to try to understand species interactions. So basically, they, they build those food webs, and the food webs uh, basically uh, uh, depict who eats whom among species within their natural habitat. And basically, uh, the way the, uh, this web, uh, each node represents a, a species, and the edges uh, represent feeding relationship between the species. And they are interested in uh, uh, answering questions such as how does nature balance the abund abundance of different species? Can we predict the consequence of invasive species, etc.? They develop some interesting models. And, and uh, basically, they show that these, some basic, some relatively simple models actually work quite well and can predict interesting structural properties of the, the network. This is another uh, uh, exciting research area. In fact, it's uh, uh, quite challenged. There has been a lot of work in terms of uh, network science, but not much when you consider nodes as dynamic entities. So. And research in this area is key to understanding coupled human na natural systems and allow prediction of potential ecological and economic consequences of uh, natural and human driven forces acting upon them. There's another expedition. This expedition uh, is uh, uh, understanding climate change. Again, this is uh, uh, the lead PI is uh, uh, Vipin Kumar, and I'm sure he will uh, uh, say a few words uh, about uh, uh, this, uh, 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 his expedition. And the, the, the main idea is, you know, we have uh, very sophisticated physical models to understand uh, climate change, but uh, often they actually don't agree. So we need to uh, uh, couple th these physical models with a data-driven approach. Uh, now I'm really going to zoom through, uh, through the slides, but I do want to uh, point out a few issues. For example, uh, uh, I talked about species distributions. Well, we can also uh, uh, try to begin to understand uh, poverty maps. 
this is uh, 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 very, to some extent, the, the research uh, issues are similar uh, uh, to uh, uh, inferring distributions for species, perhaps way more challenged because there are all kinds of social issues, but this is an area that we really, there's not much work in this area. If we want to have interventions, a key question is what are the most uh, 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 effective ways of uh, trying to mitigate uh, poverty? Should I give a population a chicken or should I give them road access? So this is uh, really an, an area for research. There are very interesting questions, but it's very challenging because it brings, uh, you know, uh, uh, social science and other uh, our areas. Uh, into the, the picture, and that really makes these problems uh, uh, much more challenged. Uh, I wanted to, to mention uh, 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 this uh, area that is now uh, uh, emerging called AI for Development. Again, there are several uh, exciting projects here. I mentioned this project uh, for modeling catastrophes uh, uh, for uh, disease surveillance. This is the, the idea is whether or not we uh, try to use mobile finds as uh, early warning systems for disease outbreaks. This uh, 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 is Eric here. This is a project by, uh, you know, uh, Ashish Kapoor, uh, uh, Nathan Eagle, and uh, uh, Eric Harvitz. There are many other projects with very interesting uh, research questions. Let me now talk a little bit about managing na uh, uh, natural resources. Over har harvesting is uh, 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 another key cause of biodiversity loss. In fact, the state of the world's fisheries is really alarming, and the biomass of fish is estimated to be one-tenth of what it was 50 years ago and is declining. A recent study shows that the collapse of the fishery is mainly due to poor management. So we really need new ways of managing these fisheries in a sustainable model. Again, this is an example of a, a, a challenging optimization problem because we need to model the dynamics of the, uh, the, uh, the resource. And if we consider different species, we really end up with very complex dynamical systems. And now we want to define, uh, identify policy decisions, for example, when to open or close the fishery. So this really leads to very uh, exciting challenging uh, 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 computational problems combining discrete and continuous uh, variables in a very dynamic uh, 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 environment. Here I have the, the example of a study for the Pacific halibut fishery where we have the, the model for the population <laughs> dynamics, the economic models, and then you know, the optimization model. This can be formulated as a general uh, MDP problem, and basically we can uh, 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 state this problem as maximizing some uh, discounted utility considering the, the, the resource d dynamics. This obviously, uh, even uh, uh, knowing how to discount the future is a, 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 a very uh, uh, challenging research question and very controversial, even how to set up the discount rate. Uh, but even here, there are interesting research questions. What model to use to discount the future, for example? Uh, we, but based on this model, we actually identified an, an, an optimal policy, and this policy is different from what is used, and basically this policy suggests that the best thing to do is to close, open and close uh, fisheries. Uh, which is, again, different from the current uh, policy, <coughs> yet the results are much better. We looked at this problem from uh, 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 expected utility point of view, but also from uh, a worst case uh, uh, scenario, assuming that uh, 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 a finite support for the probability distributions. Again, you know, 
this framework can be used to study problems uh, uh, in a variety of contexts from pollution management, invasive species, etc. Uh, energy. So uh, let me just go and uh, skip this uh, uh, part because I think uh, I have to stop. But maybe I do want to, to mention perhaps one problem, one issue here that is very important. The, the Energy Independence and Security Act uh, was signed into law. Uh, we talked about the smart grid. They also had a very ambitious goal in terms of uh, uh, biofuels, Biofu first generation biofuels and uh, uh, advanced biofuels. Well. In order to, to implement uh, these, uh, these goals, this is a formidable task, for example, in terms of logistics planning. This really leads to very challenging uh, uh, stochastic optimization problems. But perhaps even more challenging, and I, I really think this is a key research question for us, is how can we develop computational models and uh, uh, metrics to study the impact of sustainability. For example, when, when we, we think about corn biofuel, corn biofuel, uh, 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 it was considered really uh, the, the, the best solution for, for, for uh, 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 as a, a good alternative, uh, a fantastic alternative in terms of energy. But, you know, the analysis were really based on relatively simple uh, 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 models, uh, uh, namely models, life cycle analysis models that uh, uh, make a, a, a linear assumption. There are no interactions, no, no, uh, non linear, it's very static. These models really don't factor in things like land use. What about fertilizers? What about uh, uh, food? If you are going to subsidize uh, 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 biofuel, that probably is going to shift the equilibrium. So this is really a very challenging area. And if we want to be serious about uh, sustainability, we need to know how to measure impacts. And our models are really too simplistic to, to understand this. Um, so again, you know, this is uh, areas such complex adaptive systems and multi-agent systems. We need to understand game, game theoretic issues, how, how to provide incentives and mechanisms uh, 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 for uh, policies for the exchange of goods. So this is really a critical area and basically we, we need to develop better ways of modeling uh, uh, and controlling these uh, complex high dimensional systems by combining physical uh, uh, physics based models with model based reasoning optimization and control methods but also machine learning and data and we'll skip this this is a I find this a very exciting new area but I have no time to talk about it so let me now go go to the conclusions So, oh, before going to the conclusions, I want to say, <laughs> ah. so this community is growing. We've had several, uh, two conferences, one uh, at Cornell, one at MIT, several workshops, meetings at NIPS, etc. We are actually having a special track on computational sustainability at AAAI. The deadline for the abstract uh, uh, was yesterday, but if you are desperate to submit an abstract, maybe, maybe there's still a chance. The, the papers are due February 8th. So in, to, to wrap up, this is an exciting new interdisciplinary field that aims to apply techniques from computing and information science and related fields for sustainable development. Sustainable development encompasses balancing environmental, economic, and societal needs. Sustainability has different components, climate, energy, education, etc. And basically, as a consequence, this is a very uh, interdisciplinary field encompassing disciplines as diverse as economics, sociology, uh, biology, etc. 
The focus is on developing computational models, methods, and tools for a broad range of sustainability-related applications and tasks, from supporting decision-making and policy analysis concerning man the management and the allocations of natural resources, to the development of new sustainability, su sustainable techniques, products, practice, attitudes, and behaviors. Of course, the key challenge is how to eff effectively and efficiently establish these highly interdisciplinary collaborations. And basically, the level of interconnectedness of social, economic, and environmental issues really makes these problems very, very challenging. So computational sustainability permeates the different areas of sustainability, but also brings together different areas within computer science and related <coughs> disciplines. This is like a, a two-way street on, and there's, I see analogy with computational biology. On one hand, we get exciting applications from sustainability fields. I hope that we'll be able to inject some computational thinking that will provide new insights in terms of the sustainability problems, also new methodology, but we will learn a lot and uh, you know, this will also lead to new methodologies in computer science. So in summary, I believe this has great potential to advance the state of the art of computer science with hopefully societal impact. Thank you.